Okay, we'll reconvene the council from brief delay and nope. no. <laughs> nah. Almost. Oh my God. You won't kiss the women and go away. <laughs> <laughs> We'll stay on break for the love fest. <laughs> Mayor, I think we're at uh, other public safety, so we move Okay, on. yeah. <laughs> Lenanda, you're yeah, up. It shows uh, in your books, it'll show a 23% increase. And then I told you to keep at your left hand the adjustments where we're taking 253000 out. So that 23% increase on a revised version, which you'll see next time, is down to 7%. But none of that 250000 come out of your salary? Sorry? <laughs> Does that 250000 come out of your salary? No, sir. Is that okay? No, what, what, what was that original amount in there for? Did we, did we decide not to get something, or did we just have yeah. more than we needed? They got a new radio system, and the warranty is one year, so they didn't need to budget for a full year of the maintenance contract. And originally it was the full year in there, so now it's prorated out for just like three, four months of it. Okay, so ne ne next fiscal year we'll have that big huge increase. Yes, we will. Thanks. Okay. Well, we've actually, we've had 2017 and then 2018, so they broke it up for us. Okay. So, yes, but that's where it came from. You know, citizen band radios don't work anymore, right? No, sir, they do not. Oh, you're not going to have any the towers. The encryption on the radio system works perfect. It's fabulous. And she has no capital for FY18. Well, that's just if a tower didn't fall over or something. Well, Hopefully we won't need Does anyone have any questions of Lenanda then in the detail? Are we pages. thankful for the lightning strike? Uh, yes, sir. All that, three of that them. Boat out of heaven who came yes, down and bought you a new radio system. For now, yes, sir. Nine now, million was that it? No, sir. Four point two. Four point two. Three five. Well, yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we could probably find a little bit more. Could add on to it. We too. could the UPSs and yes, sir. But we have a fabulous system yes. now. State of the art. Congratulations. And we have maintenance where we're going to keep it state of the art that we, the next person that sits before you, that's the director, does not have to beg and ask and pray to Mother Nature to take care of something. Right. So now my work this time is work again. It. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, any other questions for uh, the non central dispatch? If not, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, then we move on to Publix Works and uh, <clears throat> looking down in order here and I'll just let it up to the council as to whom they want to question, if anybody. Uh, any of questions of uh, Scott or any, any of the folks uh, dealing with uh, Public Works, streets, uh, streets? Most of them are uh, negatives and fall within what we ask right. them to do. Mayor, I did have uh, just a couple things to go over with our cut, if I could. Mm -hmm. And our, on our operating more specifically. Uh, we have operating uh, budgets for street lighting, stormwater management, traffic signs, signals, engineering, and stormwater operations. Excuse me a minute. If I tell what page would that be? Well, let's it'll, see. It'll start on uh, 42, I think. Yes, it does. Thank you, Scott. But if you don't have any other any questions concerning street lighting or stormwater management, I was mainly going to point out just a couple things in traffic signs and traffic signals. Which is what page? Uh, 47 is traffic signs. We did make cuts that, you know, um, for the 16 budget year to try to get, get the numbers down. Uh, but something that affects the physical streets that you see is the pavement markings line item. Uh, we basically, uh, we uh, cut about uh, really half, uh, 35000 out of that budget in order to meet the requirements. Um, so that's going to be about $35,000 reduction 
and the amount of streets we can strike this year. So y'all just be aware. Um, we've got, just like paving, we try to do that on a cycle. And uh, we spent uh, currently this, this year about 76000 on the streets that we've got. And so that's going to be a $35,000 reduction. So you'll get about half the amount of striking this year. Is that a safety concern? Well, the state, uh, it, it, they, the striping is reflective. And so at night when you're driving, especially in rainy conditions, um, the newer the striping is, the, the better you can see at night and that kind of thing. So it is a safety uh, uh, matter. The state, I think, has a three-year cycle uh, where they look to refresh their striping. Um, with the current footing we had, it was more around, a, I would say, maybe a six to seven year cycle for us, uh, but that includes your stop bars, your crosswalks, your school zone markings, and that kind of thing that we try to do. So, um, What process do you use to select the streets that are restructured? We ride them, and, and I mean, I have my staff ride them, I ride them, you know, we, we don't have a comprehensive <coughs> plan where we know every one of them's rating or anything like that. Uh, but we try to go as far as we can. Uh, we, there is uh, painting versus thermoplastic. Thermoplastic lasts longer. Painting's cheaper. Sometimes we, we mix that up to try to get the most we can, um, you know, on the streets that we can. So we get half as much, so what's half of nothing that we got? <laughs> what would that be? What do you mean half of nothing? I don't think we had anything. Well, we had seventy. We had seventy-six thousand dollars that uh, we spent on the streets this year. But not in my district. I'm not sure we did any in your no, district. No, you didn't. I so have. what's half of nothing? That's what I was saying. Well, you'll so get we'll less get next some. year. We'll get some. Thank you very much. But just you're if, take if you didn't, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're gonna now, take some of ours. Now, up. also, certain districts that are more residential uh, yeah, will have less pavement markings in their area. Yeah, so a lot of the residential neighborhoods don't have it. It's mainly keeping up your main thoroughfares. Um, you know, throughout the city. So a lot of your collector level streets or uh, sub-collector streets that have your uh, double yellows. And of course, if you've got a, a center turn lane, you know, that's it's more expensive to strike those and keep those refreshed. Okay. Well, does this concern you? Um, I just want to make y'all aware that, that well, you're the expert. Something. Does it concern you? Yeah, I, I think we need the current level that we've had. And we, in the past, we, we absorbed that with um, kind of a general contracting line item. And at one point, I think, Randy Wall, I think Councilman Wallace asked for that to be separated out so that you could track what we were spending on pavement markings. And so we've done that. We gave it a specific line item, and we're trying to fund that to that level. Is our history been around seventy-five thousand dollars per year over the last several years, or uh, best you can? Probably three or four years ago, we tried to push for an increase because we knew we didn't have enough funding. Uh, so the <coughs> current funding levels, were, you know, we're satisfied with. So the, but now we're going back yeah. probably to what we had four or five years ago. And you said the state restripes about every three years, and we're on about every six-year cycle. So we're about twice as long before we restripe basically. Correct. And that's based on rough numbers that I've calculated. Um, I don't know that the state meets their three years cycle, but um, so that said, you know. That, Any I other questions, that, Council? I have one, Scott. You have a where's the line item for street resurfacing? Uh, it'd be in our capital. capital. I can handle that in just a second. Yeah. If I if I could cover one more in our traffic signalization. Uh, we're experiencing a, a, a change, I guess, uh, uh, the Jackson Energy Authority has provided our maintenance for years, um, and they're now transitioning where we're going to be taking that over in a couple of years. Um, so we've got some salary line items in this budget that, uh, that we have not had in the past because we have a couple of staff that are training. Uh, at JEA in order to make the transition easier in the future. But we still held that. Um, so, so traffic signalization shows 11% increase. Um, however, uh, there's one 
uh, in contractual services where we use to uh, repair and replace uh, signal detection, either loops or video. Um, we've had to reduce that budget down to $6,900. And I know at this point we have about $32,000 of uh, signal detections that is, bad, that is bad right now. So, um, you know, with the current budget, we're going to have uh, about nine intersections that, that that I know of now that are going to stay unrepaired. And so we really need really need some additional funding in that line. But I can go back and you know try to talk with Sam and Alan and them and see if we can. We need to find some more revenue. Is what you need to try to do. Yeah. Okay. But uh, oh. now you want in capital? Go to capital? Yes, if you can go to your capital. Okay, that's back. Uh, it's on page, page five. five. Yes. yes. Yeah, the, uh, the split I have, uh, the breakdown in street resurfaces, it's under the uh, um, street resurfaces and projects line item. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, 900000 for general paving. Um, 1.3 million uh, will be improvements in and around Dedrick Street with uh, Phase Two of uh, of Jackson Wall. It, that doesn't include the roundabout, right? It does not include the roundabout. That it has a specific uh, fund. Uh, McClellan Road safety improvements. That's in Randy's district. I talked to him about that. We're really rolling over current paving money that we had this year because uh, he didn't get any streets paved in his district because we've been working on this S-curve safety improvement. And then we've also included uh, the Westover Bridge replacement. Uh, we awarded that contract, um, but the there won't be any billing or anything till the next fiscal year, so that's included in that. Uh, and then the Highland at Dedrick is your roundabout. Uh, it's not called roundabout in our budget, but round, Highland at Dedrick. Any more questions? That, that's under the Highland Avenue sidewall? Uh, no, that's um, uh, Highland and Dedrick is the it's roundabout. roundabout. I got you. Highland Avenue sidewalk is the uh, state project, uh, funded project we got through uh, uh, a grant that is going to put a sidewalk down uh, the, uh, uh, be the west side of Highland between Skyline and uh, Radio Road area where that missing link right. is. A lot of people drive mm -hmm. their scooters and try to walk down through there. This phase of FE right improvements, will that complete that process? Or? It will not. This is a, we split that project out. Uh, where This phase is going to be the northern section from Parkway to, uh, um, what is it? Uh, Ridge Crest. Right up there where the five lane starts at Ridge Crest. Okay. Any other any other questions, Council? I didn't know if this was directed to Scott, but who would discuss the CRA East Jackson? Uh, that would be Stan. 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 Okay. Both. Both. I like to see both of them. Good. So what? Both. District one and district two, whenever that comes up. Okay. Stan. All right. Any other questions, Scott, on on capital or operating? Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Mayor, when Stan's coming up, uh, between now and the next meeting, we mull that over. When he's talking about where he's short, and we can always add that at the next meeting, can't we? We, do the we, can, we can add it when we come up with some more revenue. Uh, I guess. I mean, that's normally that's normally what we do. Or either that or go further into the fund balance. Um, well, let staff, you know, staff will have time to really analyze you know, where, what's been brought to the attention of, of the council and see what we can do for, for the second reading. And, and if we can do it with an existing revenue, then obviously that's where we'll go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, where are we, Al? Well, I think they want to uh, have Stan address the right. CRAs. So. What specific questions did you have, our minister? Uh, uh, just... It's 188,000. What is that earmarked for in your capital? Uh, that's and this the, is District Two. That's the District Two. Uh, that was that's what's left out of the original 400,000 dollars or so 
uh, for District 2. Uh, most of that money has been committed. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of money left over that we're kind of holding for um, a project that may need some assistance that won't meet the federal requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got about a, a little bit over almost $700,000 of the, of the original Section 108 dollars for, right. for District 2. Uh, that money has federal requirements in terms of job creation right. and has to be economic development. So uh, we are we are working through that money. We've got uh, we're working through a development contract with a group that's going to do a retail lease space on Chester, on the land that we own uh, just east of uh, the former camp's uh, grocery. So right. we'll be working on that. Uh, we we still are working with Hands Up. They'll be relocating their facility on Phillips. Uh, and we have the, the Whitehall uh, retail development project that's the, where the Huddle House is located in the Bennigans. Uh, that lease space is being developed now, and, and we'll see those lease spaces fill up in the, in the next year or so. so. And, and once these funds are depleted? There's no request for additional funding. You would, okay. you would have to find additional funding if you Just wanted to, uh, to provide any incentives uh, going forward. Uh, at some point, we hope to see market forces take over, and and us not be you know in an incentive mode. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we'll just have to see how that plays out because uh, in District Two, it's still you know we're still trying to overcome some sure. some things, and it's taking a little bit longer to to get those things going. But but we are having some successes, mm -hmm. uh, and we are moving forward with that. So. Uh, we'll just have to play that uh, out when we when we get to that level. You're pleased with our progress. I am. Uh, you know, it, it always could go faster, uh, but we are very selective in the projects that we support because the resources are so limited. We don't want to invest in a group that doesn't have the financial capabilities to make the project successful and to go forward. So, so we have a vetting process for people that bring proposals to the CRA. We have a District 2 subcommittee that reviews them first and makes recommendations. And then we have the full CRA board that reviews them. And so, you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't have people coming in and saying, I, I want some money. Right. Uh, I don't have any of my own. <laughs> uh, I want you to just give me no money reason. and give me land. And, 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 and so if we were doing that, we would have a line that would stretch around the block what we ask from them is a leveraging effect. And so if we're giving money to a, to a project, we want them to be bringing money to the table also because that's the only way you can stretch the monies that you're using for incentives because the idea is not to, to bankroll a, a development, it's to incentivize, and that's what we're trying to do. So, so yes, we are uh, seeing some successes, and it's moving, but it, you know, it never moves as quickly as we'd like it to. Right. And, and Stan, uh, refresh my recollection. When did we create those TIF districts? Has it been five years ago? Um, well, District 1 um, came, um, I'm not sure the, the how long. It's probably been four Four years, we, we, I think. We, we created yeah, CRA. four to five years. We created the CRAs about the same time. Yeah, we yeah. created the CRA in about oh9 okay. The TIF monies, uh, the TIF districts were created uh, some time after that, and then we had to see. You know, I think oh9 9 was the base year. Base year. Um, so, so we've had it in place now. District 2 uh, still has not generated any TIF funds. Um, uh, District 1 generates it, it varies it was down this year uh, because the Jackson Clinic was demolished so basically it was down because uh, it's a, for a short time the the clinic has been demolished but the rehabilitation hospital has not come online so we saw a decrease but it's been running before that around two hundred thousand dollars roughly uh, a, a year uh, and that money goes back into uh, us um, making development happen in District 1. Now, District 2, again, uh, we have not seen any, uh, any, any growth in that TIF fund yet. When will we anticipate seeing some movement on that? It, uh, it all depends because it's a, it's a formula based on a base year. You have your base, and you could have an increase in your tax base, but have a decrease in de demolitions and, and devaluations of property and it offset it, and you still not see any increase. So, so we really don't know. Um, uh, we've we've managed to incentivize with the monies that were you know, that you provided to District Two, 
uh, and with the section 108 dollars we've been able to to make those things happen but that money is coming you know quickly to an end and then we'll have to see where we are mm -hmm. thank you how is mr hunt project he's making progress i mean the construction has 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 been slower than we'd like uh, but the last time i went out there which was probably a week or so ago uh the huddle house is 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 uh you know under uh, you know is is going uh and and i've heard a lot of positive comments from people i've i've eaten there and uh it's good food and it's and the service is good and the people have good attitudes so so if you can do that with a business uh and then you'll be successful so if you haven't eaten there uh please please go and eat there i'll give a plug for them because they're they're doing a great job and and it's good to have a new commercial business in in district two it's been a while since we've had that so uh we're hoping the other lease space will come online here in the next few months and and we'll see those things come on those will be businesses in there with bennigan's and bennigan's and we've got dr, dr. wright, wright and and, okay and uh, i think david told me the last time i talked to him but just about all that lease space will be will okay. be leased up when they come online okay thank you you're welcome any additional questions from council on the TIF districts? Okay, thanks, Dan. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Mm -hmm. The only other thing, Mayor, that <coughs> uh, Scott was up here, but I think we talked about it previous to that, is we do need to take note of stormwater operations, which is increasing dramatically with the bridges that we're having to replace and the piping unanticipated uh, expense that we can't really see for sure what we're going to have to do next year or the year beyond that. But at some point in time, we may need a stream of revenue because we've gone basically from, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars seven, eight years ago now down up to a million three and we'll overrun that. It'll be a million five and we have no designated uh, stream of revenue for that. Mayor, can I ask a quick question of Karen? Uh, benefits, what percentage of uh, salaries should benefits run approximately? They run 45 to 47%. Okay, thank you. So if we want to move on then, uh, leaving Public Works, unless there's any other questions, we'll go on to uh, recreation. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> we do want to make notice there that and I should have said this before, we transferred parks maintenance and groundskeeping into general administration reporting. Uh, no, we haven't. We're, we're not going there, Al. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd, well, yeah, nobody we're, told we're me. Going, yeah. but, well, we'll take those two and slip them back under under recreation. Same budget, no, no changes in it okay. other than just. But the way it's presented to them here. Yeah, exactly. That's we're the way it is. Uh, this will be on page 52. Okay, I've become a little confused here then. What are we not seeing here that we were seeing previously? Well, you got you got two you got two two breakouts, I guess two other departments, and we cannot get department heads into the Ben Langford room now because there's so many of them we've decentralized to the point to where and, and I think it's a good thing, but I think we probably have as many as we need. We have groundskeeping and parks maintenance that we've broken out into separate departments in this budget. And we have determined it's going to be in the best interest of the city and especially these departments to keep them under recreation and parks, which they've been for years and years. Okay. Uh, That's the so department that, where recreation parks was actually doing the maintenance for city hall. Exactly. Okay. And, okay. and parks maintenance does really maintenance for all public buildings. Mm -hmm. So that, that was one reason why we initially gave it some thought. But for right now, I think with the, with the, with the chain of command and, and the number of individual department heads we have, which number is pretty close to 40, and that's probably about all we need, uh, is to go ahead and leave them under recreation park. So whatever budgets they have, uh, I assume Karen will just drift back just, under recreation. Back. Yeah, recreation parks department. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sorry, you're going to get an ease and burden, but you're not anymore. So. Any questions uh, of Tony and, and the recreation parks budgets, half legs parks maintenance grounds keeping um, the big big scope of work and all of that. I can tell you that because it's 
all over the city and involves not only recreation parks, but all the other, many other departments within the city. I don't have any question, Mr. Chairman, but I want to thank Mr. Black for all this work and his staff, all this work, and in, in particular, he's been dealing with Forest Hill Park for the last three years, and it's one of the state law parks in the, in the city now, and I appreciate all your hard work on that. Also, as of last year, he designated a street in the honor of Professor John Worthen over there, and he's done the landscaping and everything over there. He's made the area look a lot better. Frank screwed out, give him credit. I think they Thank had to so quickly much. do it, and then we Mr. went Frank. back and <coughs> redid it so it really looked look, look worthy of what the name represents. Thank you so much. So, if you have a down Whitehall, just look at the brickwork. You you in charge of Civic Center now? No, I'm not. Okay. Civic no. Tony, about how much? I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask about how much is expended in the uh, summer jobs program. Summer, well, there's two parts to it. We we work still with the juvenile court system. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have their own funding, mm -hmm. and we get some of the kids from there. We get about within my department summer camp. We get about 15, 16 kids. But for, for our camp, in both camps, Westwood has about 186 children, and we, we have about 30-something youth that we hire mm -hmm. for there. And then at T.R. White, they have 250 children, and we have about 40 there. But the number there, some work for Gilliam League Baseball, okay. still going strong. We got about 20 teams there, and they started playing last night. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, so that's, that's still going strong, and summer night ball and all of that. We did some work out at Melissa's. Uh, thank Kirk and his crew. Uh, we got the lights up for the T-ballers. That's been thank one of the issues that. out there. And we got a new group out there now working, and they're very, very good group of people to work with. So that's still sustaining itself. And of course, you all are familiar with Toe Bailey mm -hmm. getting redone. Uh, Shirlene Mercer, we're going to have a move in the park this year again. So the help of Councilman Dodd. He, he, he picks the movie. So if, we get in trouble, man. Councilman died. <laughs> he always picked good ones. Yeah, I've been begging the mayor for some more money, but uh, yeah. he ain't gave it yet. <laughs> so, Tony, we're affecting about 350 plus children and youth over this summer. Yeah, if you summer. add in the Gilliam League baseball, you probably kick that up to close to 500. About 500. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, uh, Tony? How about the uh, capital? You know. Just cover that. Yeah. Uh, tennis, tennis is you, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the uh, tennis courts, uh, we've got a pretty big budget for any capital outlay for them for the year. What, what are we doing out there? Athletic. Oh, no, no, we don't. We have no budget. Okay, no, never mind. We've got Conner Park. We have two more courts to finish getting post with the new new concrete, the post concrete that doesn't crack. Uh, and that, that court will all be up to standards. But that's at Conger Park. At, the, right? at Conger. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. To a lower one had some major crack, but we're going to get those resources. The people are still playing there also. High schools and Tony, let me ask you a question. What is your assessment of Muse Park? At some point, Muse is probably the oldest park in the system. Uh, we've been getting some concerns from some of the people that go to Muse in terms of its oldness, in terms of picnic tables, pavilions, it's probably going to need a whole new revamp here shortly. Uh, now, we've got our capital, I mean, our long range plan. Uh, we're in the process now of evaluating that uh, once they send me, they sent out 4,000 questionnaires. I don't know if any of you may have gotten one, uh, but I talked with him the other week, and he said that all 4,000 came back, he said. And uh, he's putting together the information, and this is what's going to be our guiding point for, for the future. But Muse, is, is, it, it needs some, some looking at. Aren't you required now to do a long-range plan? Yeah, in order to get grants. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's is a that death. state mandate? So we, yeah, well, it ain't mandated, but it's kind of if you encouraged. Want one, you if you want that. you can't apply <laughs> for money from the federal that. government or state yeah. if you don't have one. So we, <clears throat> we've got that covered. Okay. Yeah, this will be done probably before the fall, before we 
Uh, once he gets that, they're going to send that, and then we'll have some community meetings. Right. Then they'll give us a final package to review. Okay. But if you don't have it, you might as well not apply. Okay. And we still have, uh, just to give you an update, Liberty Garden, the $100,000 grant, it's in the process, and the mayor knows it has to go to the Indian group. There's you know, any federal money from transportation department, mm -hmm. it has to go through who so many chains and they have to send it to uh, Indian Association to make sure, I guess, there's no barrier grounds and stuff, all that. Mm -hmm. And it's gone through that process. Then it goes back to the state and then they would find the governor, sign it and give us a contract. So okay. we're probably going to be looking at August, September to get started on widening Liberty Garden. Okay. Any questions? Bemis Mill is not him, is it? Yeah. No. It is? No. Yeah. The is that? In okay. Capitol Hill. Is that 695000 Yeah. Is that what it anticipated it's going to cost us to tear the buildings down? Or is that just for the construction of the park? Park. Just the park? So mm -hmm. we still don't know what it's going to cost. Park and demolition. Is that park and demolition? Okay. That's park and park and demolition. Okay. Right. The demolition right. and the park then. And the park then. We've, got, we've got no hopes of getting that money back from well, we're, going to, we're going to ask the court to try to get it back for us for sure. He's not going to get off scot free if we can find him, which I think we'll be able to do. What's the guesstimate on the breakdown between the demolition and the actual cost? Demolition. 370 is for the park, 325 is what we have for the demolition yeah. currently. Yeah. And we're right now, we've, the city forces have been doing what what's been done the last couple of weeks and we've taken bids and we're not very happy with with the amount of the bids that's come in <clears throat> uh, I know it's going to be expensive but but uh, we're still working different angles uh, try to get down the structures still standing get them down let us haul it off and dispose of it uh, should be able to save us some money so we're working several different angles on trying to get that done but we are working on it which is a big improvement over the past year Absolutely. It's looking better every day. Appreciate it. Okay. Anything else for Tony? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you all. <clears throat> I don't know what we're doing with all those bricks. Are we filling up some gullies somewhere? Yeah, we are. We're oh. saving them. Okay. <laughs> That's right. We're going to build a good fence around your house. The next basic okay. area, Mayor, is uh, public buildings. And of course, that's in good shape as far as the bottom line, a reduction almost of 5.6%. Uh, but uh, the council may want to question any one of the main buildings, Civic Center, Omen Arena, Fairgrounds. Y'all can look down the list, uh, council members, and just see if there's anything that jumps out at you. Uh, we have people here, some of us, I think, to be able to answer your your answer your questions just the one um, that did on May is in the Civic Center was their utilities expense we spent 142,000 a year today and they've got a budget of 235 uh, I'm on page 54 here you want I, to you want to, you want to come by I know you've done a lot down there on your utility costs and cutting it back um, I I'm think sure. you my, my yeah, question, they so. got an answered last year on that. I think it's that during the summer, the, the utilities are so much higher, so we just had not spent it for the current year as of yet. It does, and I think there's a little bit of a, <clears throat> a little bit of a lag in the um, in the um, reporting of utilities. It's a automatic payment, but perhaps on the ledger it might be a little bit behind. Okay. It, it is 30 days. They bill okay. about 30 days. Okay. Our okay. our uh, Karen, our totals we're looking at here, 2017 year to date totals. That's through May. So we're missing, we're missing June plus a no, crude month. No. These are April numbers. April. This budget was run June the sixth. Uh, we had not closed May out until last week. Okay, so we're really three months behind, basically. Correct. Okay, that answered my question. Then. Thank you, Perry. Okay, any other questions about uh, Sarah or Omen, uh, which Perry has? Uh, anything on capital for Civic Center and? Uh, and Omen, do you need to ask Perry? If not, thank you, Perry. Appreciate it. Uh, rest, of, rest of the building, Ned, Fairgrounds, you see them there. Um, is 
any questions, a good time to ask them. Okay, all right, good deal. Um, any comments at all, the council, as far as the budget's concerned? I think still, I, I still feel like it's kind of a work in progress between now and our second reading. Uh, we we have kind of the drift in the council on two on two two items, uh, which we probably need to look at for the second reading. That is the um, training budget for fire department. Uh, since we had the the survival live house left out of that. Uh, that that amount. Then also, some through uh, signalization, pavement marking, et cetera, uh, from public work. So we'll, with, with those two things um, jumping out, uh, we'll we'll try to look at those for the second reading. And, and if we still haven't else. addressed, Mayor, the other areas like we talked about debt service. That's really uh, not explainable. It's just large numbers of borrowed funds being transferred to capital. In the same way below capital taking those funds and applying them and we've looked at the capital projects but health and sanitation is one that yeah is a yeah kathleen kathleen there's any uh well, let's I look just, at i the, have one question on public buildings yeah. we, we've already replaced the hvacs and the clubhouses in the concession equipment that's a good point is that, that thirty thousand that's in here for next year we already did a budget amendment last time around i believe karen did for thirty four thousand Mm -hmm. So we can take that out. I remember concession equipment too. Is that in there, or was that talking about for this year? Uh, no, that was just the HVAC okay. for the clubhouse. Okay. Yeah. But we will, Karen, if you want to make a note, we'll take that thirty thousand out. Is that in, is that in capital? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it wasn't budget. Yeah. So I don't know if this is. <coughs> Okay, but the ball, the air conditioning was the main thing. Right, it's I remember that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, Ms. Honeycutt is here for health and sanitation. She handles the <coughs> several different things within that department. Number one, the contract with waste management, um, mowing of lots that have grown up and the cord is authorized and be cut. Mm. I will say, as far as the property maintenance for the lots. We've doubled the number of uh, lots we're taking care of. We're almost at 600 lots that we maintain for the mowing area. So many of those that, were, that we were doing at the request of the, the building department, we put on our permanent list because they weren't able to find owners for them. So we just take care of them on a regular basis. Kathleen, what is the code or, or rule relative to a commercial property that is either adjacent to or near a residential neighborhood? The code for what? As far as uh, mowing. I, I was told. I don't think there's a specific one for commercial business. Okay, I, I was told that it, it, the requirements are different, that um, a commercial lot, of course, with no uh, building on it, um, is not required to keep that lot mowed. Is that true or, or, or not? I don't think that's true. I, okay. think, I think the mowing, the limitations for mowing is the same for residential or commercial. Okay. Well, well I'd like to talk to you about okay. that. <clears throat> any, uh, any additional comments or questions for Kathleen? Kathleen's uh, capital is built into her budget. It's not part of our separate capital, so uh, what, what, yeah. what question I had is we had a state recycling grant last year that we never spent anything on. What, what was the we, deal? We didn't qualify for uh, a rebate this, this past year. Okay, okay. Uh, I'd like to talk to you, I guess, just uh, some other time about recycling. But uh, the other question is on the landfill fees. That was that in, increased a pretty good bit from last year. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, host fees revenue from the landfill. Is that... Could you explain that just a little bit? Are we just expecting more money there? Or? That's based on uh, we are the host fee. We sold the landfill to Allied BFI, and the total amount of tonnage that's dumped, whether they bring it in from um, Medina or wherever, whatever is dumped in there, uh, we get a dollar twenty-five per ton, based on whether it's uh, garbage or. 
C and D. C and D. Construction demolition. So all it means is there's a greater amount of tonnage coming in, and we are the host. Okay. So we just budgeted for a little increased revenue there because of that. Yes, well, we're getting it this okay. year. Yes. As far as capital, uh, last year I purchased three additional knuckle boom loaders, claw trucks, and uh, not buying any this year. The biggest expense in capital is a, a roll-off truck, which will be we what we have existing. We retrofitted. Uh, an old claw truck to be able to haul our recycling containers. So we're asking, we are going to purchase a, an actual roll-off truck for our department to use to haul the, the recycling containers. And, you know, a couple small trucks and, and mowers. We do need a couple of mowers. We're going to try to uh, phase those in one, in one at a time. Mr. Chairman, okay. yes. Kathleen, we, we're certainly appreciative because you have a a load on you, and I'm glad that we approved those two new claw trucks for you last year, mm -hmm. because for some reason or another, the citizens are putting it out there. They and are. And we hope doing that you, in, in, and we hope that you all can, can get it all up, because I've never seen the amount of the tonnage of, of trash that's been put out here since I've been on the council. Mm -hmm. I agree. But you all are getting. It. Yeah, it, 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 it is getting. It is getting. Uh, Tremendous. I, but I, some, some, of our residents, some of our residents have what we call the eternal piles. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they're doing a good job in getting it up, and uh, waste managers collaborating with them. I just have one question. In our contract with waste management, last year we said that they would pick up the small piles with their regular residential trucks. Uh, mm -hmm. We I were having to stay on done. them about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not doing that no. quite as effectively as we'd like. And, Surely, we've talked about it, Kathleen. Right. One challenge in, in some areas of my district are where we have rental properties and people move, and many times they leave <laughs> right. a, a lot of a lot of furniture and other other things. That uh, so, uh, I'd echo Councilman Buchanan on your effort. And uh, we're uh, with my drivers that are out. Uh, if they and and they work specific districts every day, so mm -hmm. they know what small piles are left after the garbage collection days. Mm -hmm. I asked them to take pictures of them, send them to me. I send them to, to waste management and ask them to go back and pick them up. Okay, and any of those, the, any of the council members that see that, see that, you can get that information. I have to have specific addresses to send them back to. Them. Okay. Is so, that a findable offense? Uh, it is. It's not a thought. It's a part of the contract. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Is, is it because of the turnover employees they have, temps not knowing the... I think I think that is a lot of it, mm -hmm. yes. especially this time of year. Right. He wants to handle hot trash. That's right. Oh, not. Right. Okay. Any other questions? If not, Kathleen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next sheet, uh, other funds. We've already talked about the police funds, the uh, police drug and metro drug basically being self-funding. And I don't think there were any questions of Chief Weiser before. The uh, Community Redevelopment Fund, and uh, I guess Stan is probably already gone, but basically that's uh, used basically just to transfer the Section 108 loan payment that uh, is made by HUD uh, to us, and then we, we transfer it back to um, CDBG pay off what is owed, so it's a wash, basically, as you can see. And then we move on to, um, let's see, I guess the uh, Community Development Fund itself, which uh, I don't know if Latanya is here to uh, make any comments on that, but that's basically CDB, uh, G Block Grants. What is the status? CDBG, the federal grant. Yeah. I really can't answer that. That's why I was hoping Latanya would be here. Uh, yes. We can get you an answer on, on yeah, that. Yeah, may not be there. You're questioning whether it's going to be there under. Mm -hmm. 
administrations um, to come. The last Jackson Housing Authority meeting that I attended, there was a discussion relative to CDBG and home funds and that their thought uh, coming from the federal government was that the administration was either going to do one or the other. They were going to, and they, they predicted they were going to cut home funds. It'd be good to get the time here to explain that to the council. We can have her present at the July 11th um, second hearing. The other items moving down that page, um, before we have Ricky come up on the sportsplex, I will just explain the bottom one, which is the old Highway 70 landfill. And we are finally doing a um, close out uh, administered by the state or uh, overseen by the state. And normally we would have about $65,000 worth of uh, billings from tech labs where they literally kept the flame burning and monitored all the uh, state requirements on a quarterly basis. But now we have a contract with Gresham Smith to do the final close out that's why the budget increase is so heavy here. But also, um, and Sam can attest to this, he's going to be overseeing the <coughs> portion we have to do internally with uh, dirt movement, which I guess is going to be done by George's crew. Right, but I mean, this is the final closeout. There is no longer a flame burning reporting thereof, so. <laughs> okay, the, the fund balance, that's, that's coming from the general fund. It's, com it's coming from the, from the landfill's fund balance. Okay, that, that's so what my question then is. How much does the landfill fund balance still have? Oh, uh, it was. Close to 300000 So we'll have a little dab left over when this is all closed out, possibly? Unless ATA and the state makes us maintain that for what ifs. You know. But yes, we will have a little dab. Okay. Now, Ricky's here to uh, address the sportsplex if you have questions. Uh, that's basically the last item before we go to the uh, tax rate increase which isn't there. So it's the maintenance of the uh, taxes, but is, does anyone want to um, have questions? Does anyone have questions for Ricky? Or we can let him explain basically where we're at. One thing I want to make sure we understand, the sportsplex between now and the July 11th second reading is going to have to come back and request some borrowing for uh, the capital that was spent last year and this year. It's very difficult for the sportsplex to operate as a business after the 10-year period when basically we lost, and when I say lost, it was agreed upon to begin with in the interlocal agreement where we lost our main sponsors <coughs> of Coca-Cola and Bancor South and uh, several others went out after 10 years. And we also, as Randy mentioned, had a decrease in the hotel motel. But now the good news is this is our last year to pay off the 12-year capital outlay notes due Bancor South. So we will have paid off that six million, but uh, we are still gonna need to borrow some money for the capital that's in there. We had hoped to come to you and may have to uh, delay that for what we consider to be competitive items, and that's people no longer want to sit on bleachers, <coughs> no longer want to bring their own tents, and uh, every other sportsplex within our vicinity already has coverings for the uh, uh, people who attend. Uh, and for, they also have stadium seating, but that's another subject. But Ricky, you might want to just comment where we're at as far as 
teams and uh, what this year looks like, what next year is going to look like. Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of quick things, too. Uh, let me just start with the capital, too, at that point. Uh, what you have in your packets is 115000 and as Al and I talked about that, we have a little bit of a difference uh, that we want to hand out to you in just a minute that would, uh, of course, be added in by our second meeting. Uh, just a couple of three four things that I wanted to share with you that I think important. Um, the city and county just did, ex uh, as has been talked about, just signed a three-year extension of the hotel-motel agreement. Uh, West Tennessee Healthcare is now working on some type of extension for the naming rights sponsorship. Not sure that all that has been done yet, but that is in the process also. Uh, and we are we are happy for both of those uh, that will help us continue as we as we go down the road. Additional revenue, as you'll see, is not there for the month of June. Uh, hadn't been posted at this point. It's only through May. Um, and that will include the past four tournaments that we, we've had, which is uh, numbers of 84 teams, 60, 61, and 73 uh, baseball teams. 73 base baseball teams are for this weekend. I tell you, we've had a tough year with rain. Mm -hmm. Every, every place that I talk to now, too, has had that same problem. We have three full rain outs, mm -hmm. several partials. And as I was talking to the mayor before, during our break, the tropical storm, some something, mm -hmm. is headed our way with three to five inches for this weekend. Mm -hmm. So there is a possibility this state tournament may be rained out this weekend. How many tournaments have you had this year? Um, that's a good question. I'm going to say probably right around 22. And you started when? March, first weekend in March. And March is pretty deadly with us some, sometimes. Again, this has been, this will be the most in our 11 year existence. I've driven by there some weekend, there wasn't nothing going on and it wasn't raining. Well, that might have been after the fact because now we've, the only weekend we've missed, the only weekend we've missed is Easter weekend. Well, you're doing some reevaluating, I, I hope. Well, I mean, we make our decisions on our rain, councilman, by the conditions of the field. Again, we've had some partials, but we've had three full that were, in my opinion, after. There's not anybody on this council anymore for you <coughs> than I am. I've uh, been with you all since the very beginning. But in the last couple of years, I've just gotten myself a little bit disappointed, and I've already talked with you a couple of times about it. And uh, I still got grandchildren that won't play ball. And I know there's other people feel the same way, so there's not any reason we can't fill this place up. I don't know what we're doing wrong or what's happened, but there's something happened. <coughs> well, we aren't a standalone, uh, David. For one thing, we are part of USSSA, just like the Titans are part of the NFL. So we are given some tournaments, majors, for example, where we're only going to get 15 to 18 teams at the best. Some tournaments. Some tournaments, yes. So uh, we are. We have been charged by the mayor to go out and look at July because we reconvene in the fall. But July has been typically uh, almost nothing for travel ball through these uh, organizations. But we simply can't just go out like the Titans couldn't go out and play uh, somebody from the uh, Canada Football League. We can't go out and play something that isn't sanctioned by USSSA. I understand what you're saying, but when we, the, up until the last couple of years, we were getting 60 and 100 teams right. in here uh, at least once or twice a month. I've, and now, I don't know that something's happened. If you're, if, I just went to a tournament uh, uh, in Corinth, Mississippi, uh, weekend for last, and there were something like about 80 teams there. Was this baseball or softball? Softball. Okay. So we don't we, even have softball yeah. there anymore. Are we just playing baseball there and no softball at, anymore? At, at this point, we are. We have been evaluating the softball pro program, the softball. I, I am charged with, with making sure that this sportsplex makes money. The softball program in the last two, now almost two and a half years, have been in flux. Uh, there have been major associations coming in, several of them together. For five years, we had a very successful 
program with one association. Uh, she brought up to 500 teams in one year. That dropped the last two years she was in existence. Once that happened and she quit completely, we had to step back and go into a mode of seeing who would want to come back in. We did that, numbers were not beneficial for us, successful for making money at the sportsplex. We were having to share that money. With USSSA, we send a small fee, baseball now, we, spend, we send a small fee for each individual team. With softball, the, each of the associations require a director to come in here. We cannot run the softball tournaments ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then they require an amount of money per tournament much, much greater than what USSSA does for it, almost half of our money. Otherwise, they'll just go out and play where they play now, which at this point, and I've been keeping records for both Al and the mayor, I, the numbers for that have gone from three or four associations now to one association that is in this area. And basically, they're running one-day tournaments, which are not would not be successful for us. We have to have two days of gate, two days of concession, two days of everything else for it to be successful. So I've been... Uh, again, that's my job is to make this sportsplex make money. And decisions have been tough, and we are transitioning now. I might tell you that we are up 60 baseball teams because we're using those fields in D complex for baseball now. We're building mounds, and we're up plus 60 from last year on our boys' baseball. It will be a slow, uh, incremental uh, increase, but we're, we're on our way up and uh, have shared this with Gary Taylor, the developer out there, because he is concerned there's three new hotels that are gonna be coming out on exit 85, plus some additional uh, restaurants. Burger King is now being under construction out there. Waffle House will be coming. There'll be several other places and businesses coming in. So again, this move will be slow and incremental, but again, I'm charged with making sure the Sportsplex makes money, whether it's baseball, softball, or both. I just want to see it succeed. That's all I want to do. I want to see kids playing ball. That's what it's out there for. And if something hasn't gone right, I'm not blaming you. Uh, you're one of my best friends. But the business is business and friendship is friendship. That's right. Absolutely. And so I'm looking for some uh, something else to happen out there. And because we uh, stuck our necks out for this, the sportsplex. And we have been successful to this point. Yeah, so there's point, a bump yes. in the road, and we hope that bump is going to be smoothed out. Since we're, since we're talking about money, um, Al, what is our total remaining debt on the sports bikes? Are we talking about money After this year, we pay off the $6 million. We'll have about uh, two point four, something like that, that's part of an overall city bond issue. Mm -hmm. That was originally designated, if you remember, well, I guess it was before your time, Mayor, when we... We're going to build a softball complex out at Canalco, yeah. and we had three million in there for that. So uh, we have brought down the 12-year uh, capital outlay notes, which I think is a tremendous uh, achievement in in the time frame. And uh, started out at how much, and how, and where are we now? Started out at nine million nine. total. Okay. And now we'll be down close to. Uh, well, we borrowed some, uh, another $5 million for capital, so we'll be at about 2.8, something like that. Okay. Left on the sports club. Left. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm a little confused on that then. Are you saying that, that all the bonds are going to be paid off this year or just one of the issues? The capital outlay notes that were borrowed from Bancor South, which was the main financing, it was $6 million. <coughs> Okay, We're so paying off like three hundred and sixty-six thousand a year. That's going to be paid off at the end of eighteen. In the end of eighteen. Okay, on the line items, then the, the sportsplex bond principal and the capital outlay bank. I'm confused as to which ones we're not going to have next year or the next fiscal year. Of course, next next. Okay, fiscal year. which uh, which page are you uh, on? Page uh, well, that's page one of the expenses for. Help 
No, I've got it. Basically, Randy, if you're looking at the uh, uh, item number 611, that's what's going to be paid off, that $332,799 that we've been paying. And uh, what's still going to be existing is the 2004 bond issue, which is what I referenced was part of a, another city bond issue. So we're still paying 200 and some odd thousand there, 229 plus 75,000 principal and interest. Okay, and then and, and then uh, we borrowed the 500,000 uh, short-term capital outlay where we're paying 62.5 plus 8,000 in interest. So out of the 717,000 that's shown there, uh, after next year, it'll be 300 and. 33,000 plus eight, it'll be about 340,000 less. Okay, for the follow-up fiscal year, okay. Right. Thank you. But we are taking steps, uh, Councilman Cisco, uh, to keep that, keep the lights on, let's say, the problems that we are having are somewhat beyond our control because you have to align yourself with some uh, authority, which we've done with U-Triple-S-A, some uh, agency that brings the teams in. And with uh, softball, unfortunately, we were with USGA and had a very, or USGF, had a very successful <coughs> five-year tenure, and then Mary Beth Hervis who um, had a following, literally, of people she left all together and turned it over to, uh, well, to one of her umpires. Mm -hmm. And today they have no tournaments in West Tennessee where they were bringing in uh, sometimes 25, 30 uh, a week to us. And the only organization that now exists is FASA? FASA, F-A-S-A, out of Paris, Tennessee. Very successful. They're running one-day tournaments, which are not conducive to what we need to have here. And uh, that is the only association. There's like two that's trying to get in. Sorry. Be better making some money. Looks like one day be better than nothing. Well, it's not only that, but they allow people to bring in food uh, when they play in Milan or Paris, et cetera. Uh, they basically take away all of the revenues. Uh, they just are getting the tournament fees. And they do not want to share those with any other park. And we'd offer, we have already offered, we have offered to every association that we could run the tournaments. I used to run them way back when we first started. They will have no part of that. Hmm. And they want, and the existing one at this point told me last year, if he came, he would only come once a month. We can't sit still. If we're going to make money, we're going to build this, we're, at this point, we're going to build a baseball program. What, it's, whether that, you know, may not be the the right or turn to make at this point. Again, my charge is to make money at the sportsplex. Exactly. And that's what we're going to do. Right. I can assure you. We, I, I might want to mention too. We, as as we've talked with the mayor, the mayor has given us that permission to talk to the U Triple S A, and we will start. Uh, negotiations trying to get some other additional tournaments in here this summer when those tournaments play then the bids will come out for next year's and we will be work, working toward that with an open open door policy now and the you have, you have, does, yeah, does you have a possibility when you align yourself with one particular organization then you start branching out and try to get another one that you lose the one that you've had right. so it's very very delicate in the negotiations you know the two things that I mentioned as far as the sports flex, you know, there's a lot of businesses, a lot of, a lot of development going on at that interchange. The sports flex has been wonderful for that. Many of them, the success of those businesses really depends upon the success of the sports flex. Um, that's a tough situation for them to be in. It's a tough situation for Ricky and all the staff to be in, especially when your success depends on the weather. 
No, I mean, that's exactly what it comes down to is whether I'm successful or not, 70 teams coming in and, and the whole term is washed away and all that revenue is gone. So, uh, you know, how you make that up, I don't know. You know, my, my concern long term is the, the phenomenon of, of the hula hoop. You know, at one time everybody had a hula hoop. It was faddish, yes, and it disappeared, you know, within several years. And, and I, I, I don't know where this is, where travel baseball is going or not. I, I'm getting, I don't know how the other venues are doing, whether they're having tournaments of 150 teams on the weekend or not. But I, I am concerned long term as far as the viability and the continued overwhelming success of travel baseball. And I think we need to we need to factor that into our thought process as we continue to um, to look at that particular interchange out there and, and look at other entertainment venues. It, it is it is an entertainment district. You can call it whatever you want to, but you you know we've got Pringles Park, we've got Sportsplex, and we've got the the jumper outfit out there. And and uh, so we I think long term we need to need to look at that, but comes down to weather, whether you're successful or not, and that's always a gamble, for sure, and then the long-term viability of the event itself. And I think Sorry, the mayor ahead. makes an a, a, a excellent point here because right now what I'm – in my studies of tournaments that would be coming in July is that these places are putting – these places are going to amusement-type places – where they can, for instance, there's a team that was here this past weekend going to Orange Beach, Florida. They are, you, even you trip is moving their national tournaments south, or at least to amusement, where there are multi-entertainment places. We're not in competition with South Haven, but South Haven has lots of things around it at that point, which we do not have, where people can do things if they're here for more than two or three days. You know, we do have an excellent, Lori and them do an excellent job of getting all that stuff out and having activities going, but it's, it could be that those special entertainment areas at that point. Let me also say that we are having discussions with an area baseball association. Uh, many of you know when I say Dixie Youth mm -hmm. and then Little League. Mm -hmm. They have divided up into those areas. The north and central have gone to the Little League. South just mm -hmm. dropped out of Dixie. Uh, um, and they have moved into an independent so uh, baseball association. We met with them a little over a week or so ago. Uh, they have moved into 11 different counties slash cities. And they tell me at the meeting that they may have anywhere from four to seven more come with them. And one of the things he asked me before we got through the meeting, I said, we're here, we want to be on the front end with you. What can we do for you? State tournaments, a, part, a regional tournament, anything that we can do. And they said, would you be interested in a spring play day next year for us? And I thought, well, how big is that going to be? I wasn't sure, and I kind of stuck my neck out and said, let's go ahead. Yeah, we would be very interested. He said, if we bring in at least four of those additional groups. During the, during the early spring, we would have over 200 teams at the sports place, baseball teams. So we're excited about that possibility. We're on the ground floor. Yes, we've hit a bump, but I can promise you, as sure as I'm sitting here, we're going to continue to grow, and we've got to do the best we can with what we got. Yeah, they're playing at Dyersburg, you know. Like, yes. Why are they playing at Dyersburg this yep. week? They had already decided to do that, Councilwoman. I know. At, for this it. year. And he said, since we already have, we're not going to do it this year. But he said, we would well, certainly look great. at you next that's year good. to have a area tournaments and mm -hmm. maybe a possible state tournament, West Tennessee State Tournament. Mm -hmm. And then this play day would have over 200 teams in the sports place. That'd be great. So exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't like any other. to Dyersburg. <laughs> Sorry, Councilwoman. That's where I'm headed when I leave here tonight. <laughs> Any uh, any additional questions or comments of uh, Ricky while he's here? No? Okay, thank you, Vic, very much. Thank you. Okay, yeah. I think we've covered uh, all the departments and all of the other funds, health and sanitation, sportsplex, and uh, we're basically. Well, I guess we need a motion, Mayor. Uh, 
to proceed on the uh, ordinance for as presented and then to be revised. I forget how we've done this exactly in the past. We can't fold in the 512,000 yet on this vote, but we can proceed to, uh, I forget how we word that, to accept this ordinance here with subsequent changes that are going to be made. For the final, for the second rating. Yeah. Uh, we are, we are uh, dealing with an ordinance here, the budget ordinance, and everybody understands the, the, um, that particular concept of, of approving this ordinance on first reading with the condition that there will be, there will be some additions and changes, modifications for the second reading. Uh, but we do need a motion for the move so move. So you have a second. Um, before we vote, this is an ordinance um, on first reading, and all ordinances require a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing to see if there's anyone like to speak in support. And I'll be able to pass this ordinance. Hearing none, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second. Discussion, council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Okay. Yeah. And then the second item to be addressed that was noted uh, in the public notice is the uh, tax rate, which we are proposing uh, would remain the same, 1.9619. I will say that the assessor's department uh, is doing a uh, reappraisal, which I think would be uh, concluded in uh, 2018. So that certified rate may go up or down uh, at, at that point in time. It wouldn't be a change that we're making. It would be a change that would come about by the assessor's office. Move to approve. Okay, we have a motion for approval of the ordinance to set the tax rate. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Um, we'll go ahead and, and uh, on this ordinance, the first reading, we'll have a public hearing. We ask anyone present who'd like to be heard on this ordinance and support of or in opposition to. Hearing none, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. To my knowledge, we are completed, and there yes. being no further business, the meeting is adjourned.